All right, in today's video, we're gonna be replacing my old gauge cluster with this nice AIM MXG unit, along with making the carbon fiber mount. All right, so here's everything that's gonna be replaced. Obviously the tack, oil pressure, water temp, and a boost gauge. Here's the Solo that I've been using for, I don't know, since 2012, so a long time now. These things are absolutely awesome, but obviously the MXG will replace all of that. Plus I'll have the ability to hook up a few other sensors to log different things as well, so that's something I want to get into. So we're pretty much going to start by pulling all the old stuff out, figuring out how we're going to mount this, then we can kind of tackle all the wiring. So here you can see the old cluster taken out. Solo used to sit there, just kind of dead space there. This is actually a check engine light. The uh, the control pack computer comes with the ability to um, you know scan codes. I think it's been on the entire time I ever built this car, I never scanned the codes. So, but whatever. Um, so then, yeah. So here's the the new one. Since this has a bunch of holes and everything in it. And since we obviously make stuff out of carbon fiber, we're just going to make a new carbon, uh, you know, panel to mount the MXG to. Now, all right, before I show you this bit, <laughs> remember that I built this car uh, from the end of January to the first race of 2016. So it was like two and a half months I slapped this EcoBoost swap in this car. Um, so it's not the prettiest, <laughs> but. You can see, uh, you know, the three points that the old one mounted to. So I took some rough measurements. It's going to be much smaller than the old one. But um, yeah, we're just going to go cut out a carbon panel, get this mounted. And then once we mount it, then we can kind of, you know, start, start working on the wiring and stuff. Alright, so a quick little tip, um, if you have to hold something somewhere, these little spring clamps right here are always handy to have a bunch around. And then to mark the holes behind it, like this one for example, just a pick tool, you can get in there and kind of just scribe the mark that you need. So yeah, so it's a quick easy way to, you know, um, hold something where it needs to be so you're not holding it with one hand and then trying to mark the hole and it might move and your holes might be off whatever so now that that's marked the other thing we have is this one-to-one -one template of where I need to drill the holes that go to the mounts on the back of this and then cut this out so that way everything passes through our carbon panel So as you can see, here is our paper template. Here is the part we cut with the additional holes to mount it to the car, obviously. And let's see if everything worked out as it should. Let's see, it goes this way. And it looks like all the holes line up perfectly, plenty of room. All right, so yeah, let's uh, let's go get this bolted to the car. All 
All right, guys, so I very quickly and very hastily um, got a few wires hooked up. So on the old, on the old, the old tack, there was the power, the ground, and the RPM signal, which all comes off of the uh, control pack harness. So super easy to hook up. So I just re-hooked those three up right here, kind of just because I'm excited to turn it on. So, ready? All right, so obviously everything, nothing's calibrated. Um, anyways, so yeah, this is all brand new to me as well. Um, so I get to go in there and set up that dash exactly how I want. I obviously got to hook up the CAN signals. Um, I think this thing will give me a whole bunch of factory sensors, and then I'll add the few extras that I need um, and kind of kind of go from there. But you know, in video time I don't know how long this is going to be but in like real world time this whole project was maybe an hour hour and a half um, you know to, to cut that out and get to there so anyways uh, yeah let's keep moving with this thing all right so real quick I hooked up my laptop to the aim system as well as the smarty cam so that way you can see it looks different than it did in the last screen i didn't quite get it on camera because i didn't know if it was going to work or not but uh anyway it's pretty simple um obviously nothing's going on because the car's not running and then getting the smarty cam hooked up will be cool as well because i'll be able to do video with the overlays of, of everything so yeah oh and then also this just showed up so uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce that, but it's a little tiny uh, 20 gauge or I think 22 gauge wire kit with all the different colors. So that way I can kind of do something a little bit nicer. Um, again, like when I did this engine swap ooh, four or five years ago, it was kind of just throw it together, get it done. Uh, ironically enough, the car has turned every lap of every race for four seasons, five seasons. Um, so, so it worked, it was never the prettiest though. So you can see the, the cables here, or wires, whatever, are like a, a much smaller uh, gauge than a lot of stuff. You know, normally you'll see, you know, this type of, you know, 14, 16, maybe 18 gauge wire. This real small stuff uh, should work nice, keep it a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. So yeah, gonna keep moving ahead on this. Um, and see what I run into. All right, so quick update. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one that does this. Probably most of you guys watching this. You kind of start a project that you think is going to be a quick little whatever, and you just end up getting sucked into it. So what I'm doing now is I moved the cutoff. We're going to be moving it up to that corner. I'm going to put a pull cable on this side, so that way the emergency cutoff can be done from either side. Uh, two reasons it'll get rid of that big zero gauge wire that runs all the way across the dash bar and then has to go all the way back it'll kind of just clean things up a little bit um, and then the second reason is that kind of gets rid of a little bit of weight um, and just kind of cleans up the wiring so yeah we're doing that I'm getting ready to weld it it's been I don't remember the last time I welded something that's how little bit of welding I do um, so yeah, so I cut off the little plate that the old cutoff switch mounted to. So we're just going to weld that up real quick um, and kind of keep, keep trucking along. Alright, so I got the everything kind of hooked up and working right. So you can see we have the uh, water temp right there. Um, right now, I have that set for the pedal position because I don't have any other sensors uh, hooked up. It's just giving me what the OBD, OBD2 gives me. And to back it up, um, it wasn't working at first, but you can see engine coolant temp 138, 138. Um, and then I know everything's working good because RPM 740, 750, 740, 750. So yeah, let's uh, here. All right, so that shut off. So now we know that's all all right. Um, I had to use what's called just a basic OBD2 computer on this. Um, 
because even though it's a Bosch computer in here, being an EcoBoost swap, it's a it's a engine out of an F-150 with a Ford Racing computer hooked up to a uh, AIM system. So yeah, stuff's getting a little bit uh, tricky, I guess. But they do have options where if you were to put this into a car that you know just had a regular computer, you can get everything that that computer could give you. Um, so I'm not getting all those channels, but I do not need a water temp sensor. I will get a oil pressure uh, sensor. Um, and then from there, I can start tinkering with stuff with, uh, you know, dip temp, trans temp. Since I want to flat bottom the car, that's probably something I'm going to want to watch out for. Um, the wiring, not quite done. But instead of these wires running all the way across and back, I'm kind of just tidying stuff up here. So I still got to loom everything. So we're getting there. I threw the wires that came out of the car on the scale as well. A whopping one pound, 12 and a half ounces. And then I had to put, I don't know, maybe a few ounces of wires back in. So not even two pounds. Oh well, thought it would have been a little bit more, but um, anyways, it's cleaner. It's a pound, adds up. All right guys, so last night I finished up the wiring didn't really record any of it because wiring is probably the most boring tedious thing you can do on a car but you can see I'll do like an overlay of the video earlier of the whole mess of wires right here so now you can see it's pretty much just that one little loom with those 20 gauge wires in it here's the new you know location of the switch and you know fuse box and all that stuff so got this loomed so yeah kind of just tidied everything up so yeah so for the most part that little bit of wiring that I wanted to do before next season uh, is done I still need to <clears throat> get the rest of the aim stuff hooked up you can see these wires right here all go to one thing or another it comes with I believe I can do like four channels or four sensors additional sensors so yeah, so now that the aim is in and the, you know, the basics are done, it's hooked up, it's reading the, the sensors that the engine has, fine. Now I just can expand upon it. So, you know, I'll be doing that in upcoming videos for sure. So yeah, I think that's about it kind of for this one. It's a good place to wrap this up. Um, coming up next, I'm going to do jacking lugs move them from down there to around the middle of the car so that way that way I can jack up the whole side of the car at once plus it'll allow me to do you know a little bit cleaner aero stuff down here in the wheel well and once I do that uh, I believe the exhaust rerouting uh, will be done at the same time so that way I can kind of start tinkering with some flat bottom stuff so yeah I'm definitely gonna make videos on all that stuff so if you're new, please hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you guys in the next one.